Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Pingyao, the rise of China's first private banks, and the expansion The Golden Pawner by Boxed Lightning Games. It plays one to four players, and you're basically going to be playing as a Jin merchant in attempts to gain money. These original bankers, so to speak, were the people of China going around attempting to make loans, give loans, deposits, create agencies, and go throughout and share money with the people, allowing them to earn income and, and trade goods and whatnot. And their objective was very, very simple, was to make more money. And you will be playing as one of these bankers in the game. You will be rolling your die, placing them on locations throughout the board, and basically trying to gather agencies. You'll be taking out and giving loans. You'll be gaining ingots, these golden ingots, as well well as, of course, trying to gain all your fame and fortune along the way. The game plays about eight rounds, and after the end of eight rounds, whoever has the most points in a variety of different ways will be the greatest pawn shop owner of all the gin merchants. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what the game comes with and how it plays, talk a little bit about the expansion. We'll come up and I'll give you my review and discuss some little bits of here and there about the expansion. I want to cover mainly the base game, however. And then after that, you guys can take a look at the Kickstarter campaign where you can pick up both either um, or of course the original and uh, then we'll do my outro. Let's discuss Pingyao and the rise of China's first private banks. Here we have it set up for two players but it does play one or up to four players. Every single player is going to be getting a player board and a starting agency tile that they'll put in the top right hand corner. They're also going to put two silver ingots on that agency. Give every single player their manager die. You're going to give them one four sided and one six sided die, and the other die will go onto this board here in one of these four locations. Provide two single, single ingots in this area here, which is the uh, general supply area of your board, as well as down here. This is the loan section of your board. These will be available spaces for more agencies as well as characters that you can place on them at a later time. Every player is also going to be getting 10 coins, uh, five of these dark ones, and then you're going to be getting one of the brighter gold ones, which is in indicative of five of the black ones, uh, as well as go ahead and get three sets of these colored cubes, purple, black, and white, as well as your colored meeples. And I'll go ahead and give this player blue, and this player will be red, as well as placing your colored meeples on the two tracks here. You can go ahead and place them down here. This is the fame track, which is going to represent your fame as you go along throughout the game, as well as go ahead and uh, place your meeple on this track here, your remittance track, where you're going to be gaining benefits as well as points throughout the game as well. Over on this side is your manager die track, where you'll be placing your die as the game goes on, and you're going to be placing these two little markers in these indicated spaces, not allowing them to be utilized until round three in the game. And as you can see here, this is going to give you new die, as well as it'll open up new spaces on the board. Place this round marker on round one, the game plays eight rounds, and when it finishes the last round, that's when you're going to tally up all of your points. And then go ahead and place these seven or six tiles up here, as well as your one, two, and three agency tiles up here. Go ahead and put these two types of tokens over here, your coins over here, an extra die, as well as your remittance cards available with all players in mind for reach, and then give somebody the first player marker. Once you've done that, the game is ready to begin, and the game's fairly simple. The game takes place in a number of phases, the first phase being the uh, preparation phase, followed by the action phase, income, cleanup. Uh, and as well as resolving, of course. Uh, you're going to first start by rolling your die, and you're gonna roll the die on your board here, and you're gonna have a four-sided and a six-sided, so you'll check the bottom of the four-sided for its number on the top of the six-sided. And from there, every player is going to roll, and then they're going to place on this track over here. And if you share similar numbers, that's okay. You can simply place them on the spots that share the similar number. 
After you've placed them on the manager track based on their value, you're then going to activate any agencies in your one slot area. Most of these agencies will give you some unique benefit that may or may not change a die rolled to a different number, maybe increasing a die's number or decreasing a die's number. After you've done that, you can then exchange coins for ingots at a rate of 10 to one. So you could technically turn these 10 coins into a single ingot, these guys here, and place it into your little supply here if you would like. It's the only time you can do that, so after this, after rolling and placing, decide if you want to do that and then move on to the action phase. In the action phase, in turn order, from the highest die to the lowest die, you're going to be performing actions. You'll be taking die off of this board and placing it onto this board here. You'll start with this and then you will move up. So the first one you're going to see is a three. And this is going to be the one that is going to activate first. The red player will take this die and place it on any available action space that is open. If a space is not open, then you'll actually have to push that die aside and you will either give or gain or lose currency to the general supply based on the number of the previous die occupying that space. You may not place a die on one of these spaces if another die resides in either this space or this space of the same number value. So if, for instance, if there was a one here, I may not place a one here. If there was a one here, I would not place a one here. It must be a different number. Any number can go on these spaces. However, based on the number that you choose to place in these areas will determine what that action does. And there is a variety of different actions that you can choose to do. Another thing to note is based on the number that you roll, when you go along selecting your manager, so this guy being first, you can choose to spend currency or coins based on the number that you roll to re-roll that die if you'd like. You may or may not want to do that, but if you do, for instance, if I wanted to, I can spend a coin to then go ahead and re-roll this die after, I had, after it was here, I rolled a one, and then I can go ahead and place it on one of these spaces. You're always going to want to place it on here. If you can't or do not want to place a die, you don't have to. You can simply discard that die back to your supply for the next round and gain three coins, but only if you have five coins or less in your current supply. In any other case, you're going to want to place it down if possible. So I would go ahead and place something like this guy here. Now let's talk about the different actions. When you place a die in one of these action spaces based on the number, which we'll show you on the right hand side of the die, uh, you're going to do a certain action and there's the actions represented by the die. So one and two will let you buy a one, two or three agency. A three or a four die placed here will let you get a two or a, th uh, a one or a two. And then a five or a six die will let you just buy a one. Buying agencies is based on this number here. It's going to cost you six coins and an ingot. You can go ahead and buy and place agencies here, here, or here based on the die that you place there. And if you have the currency available in your supply for coins and ingots, these will let you get more points throughout the game. If I were to place over here, this is going to let me draw cards like this guy here, placing it on the side of my board, on either side of the board, depending on the player I am. And then I'm going to be utilizing my markers to keep track of withdrawing and depositing agencies that I'm currently using with, of course, my general supply being a wild, and that will give me currency throughout the game. Now, of course, it's also going to give me an ingot that I'll have to repay back by the bank. And if I don't, it's going to cost me. And of course, at every round, uh, based on the month that you're playing this guy on, whether it be the third month or the first month, you're going to go down this track and eventually have to pay this back. But you'll also be able to move your marker up on this track here if you get a card uh, from this specific action area. And of course, moving your guy up on, on this, this little track here is going to be beneficial in ways of being able to gain more value as well as points at the end of the game. And if you have a one or a two, it's going to let you do it on the third month. And if you have a five or six, it'll let you do it on the first month. And of course, the longer you have these available to you, the better and the easier it is for you. Another action is over here. You're going to be able to take a loan out or give a loan. Basically, you'll be able to utilize your meeple in this space here. So if you put your die here, you'll be able to utilize uh, one of your meeples. I'll say blue over here. Um, not blue, red. Uh, we'll be able to utilize this meeple. And on this side here, well, I'll actually do it over here just so you guys can see it better. Uh, you could go ahead and place this on the month marker, depending on uh, the number on your die. These will go up and then eventually you're going to pay money or currency and you have to repay these back but you can utilize these for that time being which is pretty useful or if you wanted to instead uh, you could simply uh, basically loan out your ingots and you can have a maximum of four ingots on this board here uh, with a two in each slot and every month you're going to gain currency up until the point where your loan is then repaid back to you so you can do either of these two things on this board based on the number of months based on the number
And then up here is a fairly simple one. This one's going to cost you currency, but give you fame or give you fame um, or, or, or give you, um, one, it's either one, minus one for one, plus one or minus two for two based on your die pip result. And then there's two other actions here. These actions are locked until round three, but I'll talk about them right now just so you have an idea. You can A, buy these cards here for a cost, and these cards will go in front of you. You can't have more than one of the same action, and they'll provide you some benefit, whether it be at the end of the game or during income. And then over here, we'll let you buy these guys here. And these guys are little agents. They'll go onto your agency board and they'll score you bonus income or currency uh, on the agency area that you place them on, provided that there's an agency there. On your board, it'll tell you how much currency that you get per ingot and per character that you have on that board. So right now during income phase, I'm gonna actually score four, two ingots at two value right here, four points. If I had an agent that was allowed to be here, then I would score six. And that's how those guys basically work. Um, and they have different costs and whatnot. And those are pretty much all the actions in the game. So after you've placed all your die out onto the board here, performed all of the actions, then you would go, you're going to go ahead and move on to the income phase. You're gonna gain uh, currency from all of your different profitable funds or branches. You're also going to gain coins from all loans that you would be taking out or giving. You're also going to gain coins from all level two branches. If you can, there's going to be certain benefits to those. And then you'll pay coins if you have a meeple in the deposit area. So for every for the meeple that you have here every month or every round when it, when it ticks down, you're going to have to pay to currency. Then you're going to resolve, which basically means if you have a marker or ingots up here, you have to move them down one. If you have a meeple here, you have to move it down one. And if you have one of these cards in one of these branches here, you'll have to move them down one. Finally, you're going to go to the cleanup phase. You'll collect all of your die from the board here, and then you're going to move the round token down one, and you're going to pass the starting marker to the next player clockwise and begin the next round. And the game will continue like that in the exact same way up until you get to this part here in which these two spaces will open up. Each of the players are going to get bonus die into their board area. And then now you're going to be able to have more die and more spaces to occupy, which is a fairly useful thing. And your objective in this game is to score as much of coins as you possibly can. Now, of course, the more famous you are, the more points you're going to get, and there's certain benefits you'll get, whether they're passive benefits or instant benefits, depending on if they're the top or the bottom of the track. During the in portion of the game, there's certain parts parts where uh, you're gonna activate new things uh, that will allow you to utilize more things. And it's, of course, there's rules as to how these die work when tying. Um, if you had, for instance, an example like this, let's say that these were all fours. I'll go ahead and make these all fours for you really quick. There we go. Um, if the first player marker was on this guy here, he would take the first action and then red would go and then blue would go. So it doesn't matter in which order you place them in, it would still be blue, then red, then blue would go clockwise. You're never gonna take more than one action in a turn unless the board looked something like this, in which case blue would get to go twice, but from the lower end to the higher end. Lower uh, value is actually gonna be based on the higher number. And that's why you're gonna be placing in this way because they're gonna value higher numbers on this action board area here. And that's the entire game. After eight rounds, you'll score points and you're gonna score points uh, for every 10 coins you have, you'll get one point. You'll get one point for one silver. You get a point for every branch that's in your second area as well as uh, two points for every branch in your third area. You're going to score points um, from your different characters on this board here. And then there's a couple other ways you can score points, whether it be the remittance level over here, your fame level over here. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game uh, is going to be the winner and control the most assets, thusly being the best merchant in the game. Let's come up and discuss the game. We'll talk about the expansion as well and whether or not you should pick up or if you're interested in the game currently available on Kickstarter, Ping Yao, The Rise of China's First Private Banks. Another thing to note in a two-player game specifically is that the other die for the other players will be used. Players are going to roll a certain number of those die and then assign them in player turn order based on uh, the 
and next to the active player space, placing those die there, or choosing to discard them entirely, thusly potentially limiting the variability of where players can place their die based on the numbers that are presented there before placing the management die, and that happens every round, and more die are introduced after the third round, thusly limiting spaces, making it a more difficult choice for players to place down their die because there's limited options based on where other players have previously placed this, or even they themselves had placed the die. That is something I thought I should mention, but otherwise the games play the same three and four and two players. Another thing to note too is the expansion. The expansion almost feels like an entirely new game. It plays very similarly to the base game and I think it probably deserves its own video in review fashion so hopefully I'd be able to get something like that out before the end of the campaign or if not maybe show it off on the stream and play a little bit or talk about it more because there's a lot to go in through it. But what I want to say is there's a lot more different goals and achievements you can get in the pawnbroker's experience expansion, there's different tiles you'll be utilizing, new player boards, a new main board, you're going to actually be building pawn shops as well, which is entirely new, and that remitt remittance track is no longer there, it's replaced with new mechanics, there's new things that you can do in the game, so it does feel entirely different, yet still similar in some ways, right, the game is technically an expansion, but with a lot of new stuff, it's the first time I've actually seen an expansion basically give an entirely new player board, an entirely new base game board as well as a bunch of new extra tiles and a bunch of new mechanical aspects to the game. Mainly I want to be talking about the base game however the rise of China's first private banks. This one here has beautiful artwork first of all from both the base and the expansion of this game. They are filled to the brim with theme. This is a moderate to moderate slightly more heavy of a base Euro game. You're rolling die and you're placing them down the board on this track. Then you're moving those die from the highest value to the lowest value onto the board onto action spaces, taking those actions until everybody has used all of their action die on that side. Then you're going to basically have to, you're gonna gain income. You're going to then uh, move all your tracks down. You're gonna resolve certain cards and certain tokens. And finally you'll clean up your bring everything back, runs again, re-roll and place out again. You'll do that eight times and then you're going to score points after the eighth round based on the tracks, based on what agencies you've picked up, and based on the ingots and coins that you have, whoever has the most points is the winner. Fairly simple in nature, but actually has quite a bit of complexity. The choices will be uh, very interesting throughout the game. You don't know necessarily what you're going to be getting when you roll these die. There's that luck involved, just like the, uh, uh, the ancient Chinese bankers, you know, they get started into this thing and they're, okay, this is what I have to work with. And they utilize what they have to influence what they can do. So you're going to be spending money to change roles, allowing yourself to go into certain areas, stay away from locations where there are too many uh, too many of the bankers already located, focus on your own areas that are going to net you more benefit. Lower numbers equals better benefit. Of course, there's a higher cost if you don't happen to roll those numbers. Uh, you're going to be utilizing your tactical uh, choices when you pick up the different agencies because you'll get options. You'll draw four and pick one, and that one is going to benefit you, whether it be during the income phase, whether it be uh, during the when you resolve the actual agency, or a even at the end of the game. Each of the tiles kind of it functions differently too. The single ones will let you reroll the die. The the, set, the tier two agencies are going to involve a currency in some way, usually speaking. And then the third tier is going to involve end game bonuses. If you have 10 of these, you'll gain a victory point. If you have two of these, gain a victory point. As long as you have this and this, those will score you additional end game bonus victory points. So gathering agencies is important. However, most of the time you will be needing to take out some type of loan. You're going to be working this is a banking style game you have to uh, control the investments that you make and try and get a return on the loans that you're taking out and if you don't you're going to suffer consequences you usually have to lose a silver off of your board if you fail or you can lose coins so kind of managing that is going to it's like a beautiful stacking house of cards that can collapse at any minute if you're not careful and you have to make sure you choose the best spaces possible players in general aren't necessarily going out of their way to attack you but they are trying to go what's best for them they're focusing on what they need to work with 
and they're kind of trying to limit what you are intending on working with. Now in a two player game that does change because you are rolling those extra die and placing those die out on the board in hopes to prevent your opponents from getting the spaces that they need. In a four player game typically speaking players are rolling their die hoping to get the best number possible for the space that they want and of course the turn order that they want. And you never know if that's going to happen unless you utilize your agencies and your tokens. So like I said a lot of deep skill and complexity involved with just six major actions that you take in the game a bunch of beneficial agencies that can change how those actions function and then um, how you utilize your currency to manipulate the favor um, for you to in order to win the game the quality of the game is top notch this is uh, in all intents and purposes a prototype rules are subject to change quality is subject to change but what I have here looks brilliant quality is perfect this feels like a fully functional this is pretty much almost ready to just go out that's how really nice this game is and the changing from one expand one from base game to the expansion is not too complex once you read the rules for the expansion you're going to have a good idea of how it's played and there's a lot of familiarity involved with that but yet still making it very different is also nice if you like these medium feeling games this like semi euro worker placements with the die rolling the manipulation involving currency of course the best bank money management aspect, this is going to be a definite must for you. I haven't seen a lot of uh, the reviews currently out for this game, but I'm going to highly predict that a lot of people really, really enjoyed this game. A lot of uh, modern board gamers are going to be into this thing for sure. Now, what I can say, however, is that it does require a lot of deep thinking skills, utilizing that, that little noggin of yours, and sometimes it can be perplexing. You might not always know the best choices, and it's one of those games that you need to play a couple times to really understand what you should do on your turn, what's going to work best for you. There are different strategies based on taking out loans and whatnot, and that's going to affect your play style as well. So if you think that making one choice is better than another, and then all of a sudden you realize, ah, this messed me up, it can potentially steamroll you a little bit up until the point where you kind of catch your momentum back. You need to find ways to manipulate your currency to make your odds uh, better, as well as to fix any goofs that you may have made along the way. Uh, Choosing agencies is also going to determine this type of play style you're going to be utilizing, as well as, of course, mainly the third one, allowing you to get bonus victory points. The two different tracks of Mittens track, uh, allowing you to get those cards that are going to give you potential currency that you'll have to eventually pay back, um, and, or, or, or taking out loans or giving loans that will get you net you currency in either instantly or monetarily over a period of time, but you'll lose out on certain currency. Just it's very, very unique in a lot of ways. I've seen games that function with currency and whatnot, but this one does it unique and in its own fun way. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this game. Now, something that Callie was not so much interested in. She wanted something a little lighter, something because uh, this game, while well, appears light on its on its base, the amount of complexity and strategy involved in the choices that you make make a difference and can get pretty weighty if you're not careful. Uh, so if you like banking games, if you like high quality, if you like a more moderate, crunchy style game, you want something with uh, a big pack of punch, and you want an expansion that's going to feel like its own unique and entirely different game, but with similarities, I would definitely suggest you take a look at this game here. I had a lot of fun with it. This is a game that would stay in my collection for sure. I don't have to return this or not, but if I don't have to, this will stay in my collection. We'll be playing this one and the expansion for countless more playthroughs. I've got an entirely uh, specific group I want to sit down and play this game with so that I can get crushed myself. But yes, overall, a solid game. Highly recommended. My seal of approval. Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Pingyao, the rise of China's first private banks, and the expansion The Golden Pawner. If you're interested in picking up or backing this game, check out the links down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick the game up. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more that are available for you to take a look at with reviews similar to this one here, uh, but with a different reviewer, and of course some unique games as well that you won't even find on my YouTube channel, so it's another way for you to go ahead and consume some content, as well as our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one down below. Every week, you're free to join us. We do giveaways on there as well as contests. We're doing a painting contest on our Discord, link in the description, as well as we're going to be doing a Patreon um, miniature painting session, which will be super fun, and we'll give away maybe something to the winner of that, but if you're interested in painting miniatures and you want to try and 
play on our Discord and join that up, go ahead and do so. Uh, I'm excited to have you guys on there. It's always a fun group of community members that will get to show off their stuff and uh, uh, I'll try and compete against me, the uh, most amazing miniature painter ever. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button and of course the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out here. Like, comment, let us know what you think about the game down below. And as always, I look forward to pawn shopping and banking with you next time.